Hey guys, what's up? This is Panzer Dragon, aka Luigi Dragon, uh, Challenger Player NNA. And today we'll be going over the top 5 top laners for patch 4.7. Not much has changed for the top lane meta, so don't expect anything big in the tier list changes, except just a few position swaps. Alright, so at number 5, it is Trindamir. So the thing with Trindamir is that if he ever gets one kill, that lane is done. Like, he'll be causing a lot of pressure onto the enemy laner. He obviously has the crazy snow potential, as once he gets that first tower, he can just keep split pushing and may even force the jungler to come. And really, everyone knows how scary a fed Trindamir is. It's really hard to stop him from what he does, as he has a lot of escapes, does a lot of damage, and has that 6 second invulnerability. So after the laning phase is done, he can get really annoying to deal with. Even if, say, Trindamir lost his lane, he can still play push really fast with Static Shiv. And Renekton is a teamfighter mid game, but obviously if he tries to teamfight, Trindamir will get his tower eventually, which forces Renekton to go top. And of course, Trindamir is a fast pusher, so yeah, he can be really annoying. And when late game comes, he's actually really scary because he does like 1k crits, and like he's really hard to kill, of course. His DPS is off the charts, and he has that 6 second invulnerability, and yeah, he's really strong late game. To sum it up, if he wins lane, he'll snowball like crazy. If he loses lane, he'll just constantly push. And of course, late game, he's one of the biggest threats there is. Although, worthy note is that he's not an easy champ to pick up. You gotta play him a bit to know what he can do and can do. So yeah, practice with him before playing some games. Alright, so number 4, we do have Shivana. Alright, so the way I see it, Shivana is really good because of her mid game and late game. It's just, of course, she doesn't really have that much early game pressure. But like, pre-6, she's obviously weak and loses a lot of matchups. But after pre-6, she's actually pretty good. And then wins her matchup because she can build against her lane. Or, of course, if snowballing, can build offensively. Although she is quite weak to range matchups. And so, of course, when mid game comes, her teamfight presence is really strong and, of course, can dominate most teamfights. As she does do a lot of damage and is really tanky. And of course she does make a phenomenal split pusher, as she has a lot of tools to escape and duel people. And so she does make one of the safest split pushers who cannot die. And of course late game comes, she's actually one of the best bruisers out there. She does both magic and physical damage. She's really tanky and of course does that percent health damage. And at number 3 we do have Renekton. So everyone knows how hard Renekton is to deal with in lane. He is your lane bully, and he's really dominant and actually wins against most matchups. And so overall he's a really good pick for top. He creates a lot of pressure on his lane early, and is pretty consistent for his pick. He's also pretty hard to gank as he does have two dashes. And then of course if mid game comes, he will dominate team fights as he's pretty tanky, does a lot of damage, has a free sunfire cape, and will be a big threat in the front line. But of course when late game comes, he does fall off as his base damage can't keep up with the damage in the late game. He only really has one CC and of course is prone to kiting. And this split pushing isn't that great. So to sum it up, he has a really good early game and mid game. But one thing you gotta do is make sure not to get to the late game as other bruisers do outscale him. Alright, so number 2 we do have Ryze. Alright, so Ryze is really good because he actually wins most of his matchups. As first of all, he is ranged. He can also build against most matchups. And will probably win most matchups if he ever gets in 1v1. The problem is he has no escapes. And is actually really vulnerable to camps. So he's really vulnerable in that state. But of course the thing is, he does skill with mana and levels, so of course if he does lose lane, he'll still be doing his thing, doing damage. And of course if he does win his lane, he will be a threat because he does lots of damage and is really tanky. Therefore his teamfight is really good. And then when late game comes, he's actually really strong, as by this time he probably has lots of mana, lots of resist, lots of cooldown reduction, and so his damage will be really high, and it'll be really hard to kill, and so he'll be one of the biggest threats on the enemy team. So to sum it up, pretty good in lane, scales with levels, and of course scales into the late game really good. And at number 1 we do have Jax. So Jax is actually becoming really popular, and the thing with Jax is that he's really strong. Like yes, pre-6 he's really weak, he has some bad matchups and can be bullied, but the thing is he does have crazy snowball potential like Trindamir, as one kill will set him off, and again once he has dominance over his lane, he will be a big threat, and somehow the other team is going to have to handle him. And that's really hard, as his split pushing is really strong, he's got that mobility to get away, he's got that tankiness from his ultimate, he's got a CC to keep the enemy at bay, and of course his damage is unreal. And if he has teleport, his tele ganks the bottom lane are pretty good too, as he does have a stun, he does have lots of gap closers, and if he has bladed rune king, even more CC. And so he can just snowball off that. And of course his mid game, if he can get into a team fight, if he gets onto someone and start wailing on him, he's going to destroy them. Of course he does have cleanup potential with his leap strike. And again, he is pretty tanky with his ultimate, plus counter strike. And of course everyone does know how annoying it is to deal with the fed jacks. And then of course when late game comes, um, he's probably the best late game bruiser there is, as there's probably no one that can 1v1 him except maybe Vayne. But then again, he's going to wreck 1v1s, he's going to wreck team fights. He's just going to be really hard to handle later in the game. On my last tier list, I actually had Riven. So the thing with Riven is uh, only people who are good at her can actually be really effective with her. Otherwise, if you only know how to decently play her, I wouldn't recommend play her. Unless you have a lot of knowledge to play as her. 
as she is a really high mechanical skill champion. And of course I do want to mention Kale, she can go top lane too, not only mid. So I mean if she's up, I'd play her up top, really strong right now, sort of like Ryze, you know kind of vulnerable to ganks. But again if she gets in that 1v1 situation, she can probably win most matchups. Hey, thank you for watching, I am Panther Dragon, aka Luigi Dragon, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this tier list, you'll probably enjoy my other tier list. And of course if you do like these kinds of videos, you can like and subscribe and comment, as it does encourage me to make more videos like this. Thank you for watching, I am Panther Dragon, and I'll see you guys next time.